You know, today is a very important day. It's wonderful that President Biden created a formal national holiday for today because it's worth celebrating, even though we're here to honor the fact that the slaves were freed, right? It's a shame that they were captured in the first place, but it's good that they enjoyed their freedom to whatever extent, and that is a a whole topic by itself, but at least there was some movement on the needle towards freedom. And so the artwork that, that we're showing in the exhibition, it may not over the top talk about slavery and atrocities and this and that, or it may not just talk about the joy of life, which some of them do, but I want you who are on the call to have a holistic view of your life. What does it mean to you to have the feeling that you're free to do what you want, whether it's to cause trouble or whether it's to cause something fantastic that is a benefit to a lot of people? Those are our choices. Sometimes the troublemakers, right? prevail sometimes the good samaritans prevail right it's it's all a part of life and we together today we are celebrating the part of celebrating freedom freedom but to talk about that we do have to see the other side of the coin that's why in the show we have both sides of the coin right and I wanted us to talk about that. This, this, for some of you, you have personally experienced um, th the feeling of enslavement, right? It can be through your grandparents or great grandparents, your great great grandparents. Stories have come down. It can be some of your friends who've told you about it. It may not have been you personally, but somehow you 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 have some experience with it. Maybe it's you've written or I'm sorry, not written, but read books about it, whatever it is, you have some experience about slavery. Maybe you saw a movie about it, you know, and you say, oh my gosh, this is terrible. Or, or you read some newspapers from old. The information is out there for if you're interested to see and apprise yourself of what's happened. But what we're doing with this show, Juneteenth, 2024, is we're now just saying, okay, we're, we're doing something artistic. We're letting your art speak, you as an artist, right? Those of you who are artists on the call and those of you who are art appreciators, thank you for being here. My name is Carolyn Goodridge and I am the executive director, the founder of Art Impact International. We've been around since 2015. We're a 501c3 organization, and th the main mission is just to make sure that, remember I talked to you earlier about both sides of the coin. Sometimes one is heavier than the other, which is you know kind of impossible, but sometimes if you look at the scales, the scales sometimes are heavier on one side than the other. So the mission for our impact is to at least help to balance it so that creativity prevails, right? So that creativity of positive creativity, there's negative creativity too, but I mean the positive one where it's beneficial to many people, right? Our mission is to really just create a, an environment where artists are empowered, that they feel enhanced, they feel supported, and they have opportunities to show their work, to talk about what it is they want to say. So they're showing their work and they're speaking for the art. But remember, it all started with the artists inside and then it came out with the art. So here we're going to allow the artists to speak on behalf of themselves and the art. So with that said, I want to welcome all of you. Thank you for for taking time out of this Juneteenth Wednesday 
and it's i'm in colonial beach virginia it's very hot it's like over 80 degrees i don't know how it is for you guys <laughs> but it's a scorcher today the ex the exhibition web page this is the official web page for juneteenth 2024 right so here you you have everything that you need right here's the video so any new videos will be at the top this is the exhibition itself. You have access to the gallery, which we're going to be using very shortly. This is the narrative of what this is all about. At the top, it gives you how long the show is going to run. It's going to run for half a year because really freedom is every day. It's not just one day. It's really every day. We, we could be all experiencing just the joy of freedom every day. All right, and then whenever, like our next artist talk is gonna be July 19th. So you just remember the 19th and it's every month until September, right? And we'll have other artists speaking about their work at that time. So now I'm gonna open up the gallery. So all of you who never yeah. been to the gallery, you can see, again, If please mute yourself if you're not muted. Um, we're going to enter the exhibition. If you start with the guided tour, that's great. If you just want to sit back and, and let the let the um, program just show itself for you. But we're not doing that today because we have certain artists talking about certain pieces of work. So we're going to just enter the exhibition, right? We already know how to. And this here makes it full screen. So we're going to go full screen. Right, and as I said, we are going to start with Patricia. So I can, you know, I love this because it feels like you're in a video game, you know, <laughs> to get, and these are Patricia's works. So Patricia, you can please unmute yourself, which you have done, thank you. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, I'm Pat Smith, I live in Central Virginia. Um, I've known Carolyn for a while as artists in the area. And uh, these are three pieces that I made this year. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the context because I did not make them for Juneteenth in particular. Um, last Saturday, I went to my Juneteenth celebration in the area in Fredericksburg. And I was uh, manning a NAACP table um, for our local chapter. And I was uh, working with recruitment. And the amazing thing is everybody who had not been a member of our chapter um, that lived in the county joined. It was almost unbelievable um, that there was such a need for um, a grassroots organization to improve the quality of our lives and that racial justice must include grassroots bottom-up advocacy. And uh, our chapter in Spotsylvania um, has worked on th lots of things in the last few years, um, mostly related to public school issues, including a school to prison pipeline, um, stopping book banning and the threat to burn books, stop efforts to close our school libraries altogether. Wow. Stop efforts to ban uh, critical race theory or the teaching of African American history as American history. Um, so there have been lots of issues uh, we've worked on that have been successful, and we've managed to get a very conservative community to get progressive um, people on the school board. So I was uh, really pleased at. Um, what happened last Saturday that, you know, freedom is not one and done. It's an ongoing process. Yeah. So my works, are, my works are related to that. Um, I don't know which one you want to start with. Well, well let's start from the, let's start from the far left here. Okay. And, this, and this one, let, let me just click on the information about this. It's American culture. The name of it is, American elegy. American culture thrives with stars like Beyonce, but even she knows discrimination. Many others are simply erased. 
sometimes permanently with only their their loved ones mourning their loss. So that's the that's your statement about this piece, American Elegy, and it's two feet by twenty four inches by eighteen, and it's acrylic on mixed media panel. Okay, so talk about this piece here. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, this is a very emotional piece for me. Um, but I'll start with Beyonce, um, which everybody knows, American Requiem, I guess, um, and how she was um, discussing her erasure from country music, um, which basically is from being country at all, which basically is being American at all. And uh, she has the kind of force of nature to um, confront racism where it lies. And so I had her as my kind of champion. Um, instead of calling it an American Requiem, I called it American Elegy and trying to deal with um, uh, general and specific um, erasures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very uh, cool. One of the people I've been uh, fascinated by in the last couple of years, um, and he's a hero of mine, is Brian Stevenson and the Equal Justice Initiative. And he had a lynching memorial uh, in Montgomery, Alabama, uh, where thousands of people have been lynched and no one has been prosecuted. And so that is kind of... Um, a center point in my thinking about this piece. Um, I've done a lot of work about the erase, the um, groups and individuals that have been slaughtered, um, the fact that there's very little justice, um, especially for uh, people of color. Um, so I've worked a lot about immigrants and their abuse and also about um, blacks in this country. Um, mm -hmm. And this, this specific case, um, there was a, a young student I knew, I didn't know at all actually, four decades ago, um, who had been on my campus for uh, two weeks. And uh, she was slaughtered. And I thought that I, I'm sure that I knew her killer and went to the police about it. And because the killer was a white man in a prominent position, uh, nothing was done about it. Um, so that has haunted me literally and figuratively for the last four decades. Um, I still believe that this man did it. And so uh, one of the researches I did had to do with her family that I've never met, but that they are the ones who know the injustice uh, in a very visceral way. And they've been mourning her for four decades and they have no idea what I knew. And I've been pretty much terrorized as well. Wow. Um, so... That's obviously a pretty emotional piece for me. Yes, yes. Well, thank you very much, Patricia, for sharing this with us. Very much. Wow, that's something. That's a story for sure. Um, I want to just talk about because you know we we have you know limited time. Let's talk about all of them, and then we'll open it up for feedback from the attendees of today and and guys you know so write your questions down or um don't put it in the chat because it's just me and i'm focusing on on the screen and on patricia's you know, and we'll go back and forth so just hold it on a piece of paper or if you want to put it in the chat you can um but at the end of her third piece then we can opening open it up to everyone okay. so thank you for understanding that and and also Patricia, you can you can give like a summary of of these pieces if you want to. Okay. So this one, um, this one is called Disinformation War, right? Right. And it's the same, the same size, and it's acrylic on panel again. 
and it's the Nobel laureate Maria Ressa. So you can tell us a little bit about that. I won't take the time to read it all. Okay, I'm my opportunity. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Shut up, my puppy. Sophia, come. Mm. Let me give her a treat. Sorry. Okay. Okay, so I'll read it for you, Patricia. Nicole Laureate Maria Ressa is a journalist under assault in the Philippines for speaking truth to power. All journalists are subject to disinformation wars if they still have jobs. Critical race theory, book banning, teaching African American history are some of the critical issues facing us today, and we must be vigilant in protecting education from the disinformation wars. All right, so, well, as you can hear, guys, Patricia is into some heavy stuff and she really is devoting time, energy, and talent to sharing her insights and her experiences with us. So Pat, I just read your description and now we're ready to hear from you directly. This is about so personal. It's, it's more universal. Um, I was reading all of the women um, uh, Nobel Peace Prize winners from the last 30 years or so. And this one was the most significant to, to me. I'll hold it up. Um, it's Maria Ressa, and it's called How to Stand Up to a Dictator, The mm. Fight for Our Future. And... Uh, I've, I'll continue working on images related to this book because it, it's to me it was really powerful um, that she's a journalist. She grew up in this. She uh, was born in the Philippines, grew up in in this country, and then went back as a journalist in uh, in the Philippines, where she's been pretty much persecuted. Um, the only defense a journalist has, she says, is to shine the light on the truth to expose the lie. And so um, she deals with lies like Trump won the last election that 40% of the country believes. Um, and she deals with the politicians in her country. Um, so she's been arrested, but you know, she's a very clever woman and she's uh, mm -hmm. had good uh, legal teams. Mm -hmm. And she's very bright about how to how to combat this kind of propaganda machine that's going on uh, in the internet right now. Wow. Um, so, yeah. And then the last one here is called white white room white room torture. Right. This is. Um, by Narjas Mohammadi, who is another um, Nobel Peace Prize winner uh, from last year. And she wrote a book called White Torture. And it's, um, she wrote it from jail. Uh, she is a lawyer and she, she wrote, uh, about 14 of her jailmates, their personal stories about um, their their histories, and none of them actually committed any crimes. So this is all uh, all political. Um, so there's mass uh, a culture uh, incarceration in uh, Iran solitary confinement, which this piece is really about, which is central to our theme about how um, sensory deprivation and solitary confinement really makes you mad. And it also physically assaults the body. So she's had heart, heart problems and things like that as a relatively young woman. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is about the madness of solitary confinement. Wow. Um, but in America, <laughs> we incarcerate the most people. So if 6% of the world's population is American, 20% um, of the incarcerated are in America. Mm. Okay. So, wow. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. And because we live in Virginia, uh, mm -hmm. we're the last state to have mandatory disenfranchisement uh, with someone with a felony conviction so that they can never vote unless a government a governor um, intervenes on a case-by-case -case basis. So we are in the process of trying to change the Constitution to change that law. Okay. So uh, anyway, that, that book is really powerful because of the anecdotal evidence. And I'm sure all of you have heard about some of the horrors going on in Iran right now. Um, right. And if you don't mind, Pat, before before we head out, if you can put the titles of the books in the chat, those of us who would like to, you know, to follow up on those readings, you know, if if that's I, I can try, but I'm okay. <laughs> find out I'm a total idiot about um, no, don't say that technology. Okay. Okay. Well, oh, otherwise we'll, we'll, we'll do it together, but I want to, so thank you, Patricia. Um, we're, we're going to move along to the questions real quick and then we'll go with Nancy's artwork. Okay, guys, if you have a question, you can please unmute yourself and direct your comments or questions to Patricia for any of the three works or all of them. You just have to unmute yourself, right? I, I actually I had a question for you, Patricia. With mm -hmm. with this piece here, are these they re they really look like fingerprints, right? These they look like like a painting of fingerprints that's been blown up almost. But it is is that was that. It, everything in my pieces are ambiguous. Um, one okay. of the things I do in all of my work is um, take things that are traditionally taboo in painting, mm -hmm. like pattern making and um, any decorative element, and use it towards, you know, a thematic context. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So th those were actually stenciled patterns um and and it could mean a lot of things it could mean chaos it could mean okay. um madness it could mean um anyway what happens with these women is that they are interrogated for endless hours at a time uh, you know trying to brainwash them into changing their political views okay and uh with these 14 women it didn't work so okay. And and the, you have dragon figures in both this one and the next one. This one, right? I worked on this it, kind of the same time. Right. Uh, I started with the race one. This one that I was trying to get um, a Philippine monster. So I was looking at the folklore, and they have okay. just unbelievable numbers of monsters. And okay. then I stepped on a dragon monster because all cultures have dragons and I was going to bring it back to our culture. Okay. As Thank a mom. So that's why I chose that. Okay, great. Thank you. Those, those were my questions. Does anybody else have a question? Did, Nancy, I think you unmuted yourself. Do you have a question? I just wanted to say in short, Pat, that um, I'm profoundly moved by what you've said, what you've shown it hits a lot of chords within me. I have a very dear friend from Iran. I know um, a number of people who, who were, uh, sorry, I feel like crying, imprisoned in, in Iran in jails for um, many years. So with that, I truly relate to what you're saying and many of the other things you've said. So I've, I actually would like to um, find a way to connect with you in the future. Cool. Sure. <laughs> cool. Excellent. And, and um, I'll, I'll make note of that because, because Pat, you, you each can put each other's emails in, in the chat just to each of you if you wanted to, but Pat may not. Okay, thank you. Thank you for those remarks, Nancy. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything to say that they want to share with Patricia? Anything about her artwork? that moved you or that you could relate to or that anything um, 
specific about the art, the colors, the shapes, the forms, anything. I just wanted to go ahead and, and say something, Patricia. You know, your artwork is very fascinating and very well done and inspiring. I just love the colors of what you've done, and it really adds meaning to your work, and you did a great job, and, and I thank you for sharing them. Thank you very much. Yes, i also like to comment on your work, Pat. The last piece um, with the lady in the center, the central figure, uh, with the look like fingerprints. I like that um, that concept, that approach, because um, it almost applies to that you know that prison system where you have to get fingerprinted and all that penal system. So I really like that that concept, even though it may have been random, but I love it. I may even use that that concept <laughs> in the future. <laughs> it's very nice. nice. <laughs> nice, nice. All right. Mm -hmm. And 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 I think I saw Mark. Mark had a, his hand up. Mark. Uh, yes, um, Morella, you steal my thunder every time, brother. Uh, Pat, <laughs> those fingerprints, the passion you had for those women, many, many, many times, their identity is being stolen from them. Um, I placed. I looked at those fingerprints as maybe being the last piece of individualism wow. that they had. Wow. wow. That's how I was drawn into that one. Wow. 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 Thank you, Mark. That was profound. That's a great insight. Yes. That was really, yes. really good insight. All right. Um, if there are no other comments, and thank you all for your, your comments. And Patricia, I really, really appreciate your, your thoughtful beauty that you bring to this ugly subject of incarceration, of torture, of brainwashing, of, of people being locked up when they did nothing, of, of people being killed when they, they, what did they do? They didn't do anything to anyone, right? So thank you for that. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to move along to Nancy Frankel. Nancy. Okay, uh, my name is Nancy Frankel, and I live in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and I've been um, <clears throat> creating, I think, since the moment I was born. It's, um, to me, creating is really something that falls in line with breathing and eating and sleeping, and I will speak a bit more about that. Um, I want to say more about what I feel about being an artist than specifically about my work at the outset. But I will add that I do work in mixed media. Uh, the first piece has uh, glass and silk and um, it has uh, acrylic paint. The second one is acrylic and the third one is visuals, as you'll see, photography and, and poetry. <clears throat> so. I may look down as I'm speaking because I am so profoundly affected by this day for many, many reasons, um, some of which um, Carolyn know, knows about. Um, so I had to write down a few notes because I am so emotionally moved by Juneteenth, just saying this word stews my soul uh, very profoundly. And I think I'm living proof of the fact that when you look at a, another human being, you may not know from where they derive, you know, I have very light skin. Um, <clears throat> let's just say that my heritage is interesting and um, I have a profound connection to slavery itself as well as to the Holocaust experience. Um, those two together have really come together within my very sinews, within my genes, within my being. And so that's why Juneteenth hits me so deeply. Um, there's just too much to say and feel with respect to this momentous day. So, <clears throat> excuse me for sounding hoarse, but while this is a day of celebration, as Carolyn said, it's equally a day in which many of us are aware of the turbulence, dis-ease, and anxiety that's currently disrupting our world and I'm a visual artist and I'm a poet and I'm also a philosopher of ethics. I've taught many courses at university and what I try to do with everything is bring 
awareness to what I consider to be ultimate truth, the truth that, oh, how can I put it, that we all derive from one generative source, from one creative force of power, some call God, some call the power, some call spirit. We all came from one place and we each carry the same generative creative spark within us. And I believe that it is a thing of beauty, of profound beauty. And that's what unites us all. We all started from one speck and therefore we are one human family. And I often say we're one living human quilt. And so there are so many people in our world right now um, that are suffering. But if we focus upon Juneteenth and the experience of black people and slavery, um, if we just look to what happened when Barack Obama, you know, became the first black president, a man of such integrity, um, we still see the cruelty and hypocrisy and what I would call the idiocy that persists with reference to the treatment of black people, not just in the US, in Canada and worldwide. And while this angers and frustrates me and makes my heart ache, for me, one of the ways of action that propels me to continue to help make changes in our world, and I'm involved in different organizations, but, you know, including environmental work, etc. But for me, I feel that I become overwhelmed and I wonder how can I accomplish anything when there is so much yet to accomplish. And what has struck me repeatedly after the last, uh, you know, during the course of the last few days is something that has continued to imbue my life um, and guide me from the time I was a child. It's the desire to spread and create joy and beauty. And one of the ways that I can do so, the main way I feel, is not just with my words, but with my visual art as well. And I see that there is a startling resilience and beauty and magnificence in the human spirit. And we always rise like phoenixes, it seems, from the ashes. And what I also see, and I'm sorry if I'm choking up, but this is what I see, that we lovingly carry others upon our backs, on our shoulders, as we navigate all of what we endure. And so with this in mind, I thought about the massive importance that we artists play in this world by the, you know, by, you know, seeing your work, Pat, which is beautiful. I've seen the work of other people in this organization and by virtue of having been gifted with artistic ability, we carry an immense responsibility to share our insights. And it, in my case, I feel to offer beauty um, to our human family. And I do see art as a vehicle for change, for soul enhancement, for respite, for profound thought and more. So we have to continue to bring forth our creative offerings. And one of the things I wanted to mention that came to mind, I, I spoke of this during a lecture that I gave at a university about three months ago, and everybody was sort of in shock. There was a time... Um, during the First World War in 1914, uh, it was Christmas Eve, and many, some, maybe some of you know of this, it really has struck me deeply. The British and German soldiers suddenly stopped fighting and shooting, and the British heard the Germans rejoicing and singing Christmas carols. And so they all laid down their guns, and they started singing together, and then they engaged in a soccer match, which is... It just sounds so unreal and actually bizarre. After Christmas Eve, they went back to their shooting. But the point I'm making is that music as an artistic form, something so very beautiful, stopped the ugliest of behavior. And so I feel that we as artists can do so much, even though people in quotes sometimes think, oh, art. It's a piece of fluff. It's fluff. It's lovely sometimes. It's interesting. It's challenging. But is it really important? Yes. 
I say it's vitally important. It's so crucial. It's as crucial as anything else that one can do to try to bring some beauty and unity to this crazy world in which we live. So that's what I want to preface things with. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> so let's let's look that that's that's very heartfelt. And the, the the attendees will definitely give you feedback on that and to, to let you know how they feel about what you just said. But meanwhile, Thanks. real quickly, we're going to look at the three pieces that you have in the show. These are two works of art that you've created, right? Yes, the first yes. two. But behind each piece, you wrote a poem. So I'm yes. going to click so they can hear it. And yes. then the, the last piece was the longest poem, right? And we collaborated on the visuals for the for the video. Yes. Okay, so let's see. Let's check the time here. Okay, good. So let's go with the short. With the would come to me and dance, right? Yes. So you guys can hear. And then the explanation as well is important. I dance to touch my soul, to merge the honest movements of my spirit with the earth. Inside this echo frame, I chant the wind's whispers, feel the leaves' greenness brush my skin. As I dance, the pulse of music holds me firmly to the tendrils of my truth. Wildness and gentleness, neighbors pure in kinship. They come to me and dance with me. So come to me and dance with me. Come to me and dance. Together we will leap and kiss the sky. All right. Uh, yeah. Carolyn, the info part, it's very short. It, it helps. Right. It goes with, with come to me and dance. Okay, right. So when, when you click on it, every come to me and dance. I dance it's up here. Yes. Right. right. This is this is the poem. Right. With the earth. That's my explanation. Right. I chant the okay. whispers. Okay, I'm gonna back out of that one. This so, is actually it's a very important explanation of what I feel, you know, how I feel honored to be in this exhibition, to be quite frank, I really do. And I'm speaking about the importance of music, as you well know, and many people here know, uh, within uh, black history, black culture, the black church, dance, music, it was salvation uh, for many. And um, this freedom of dance, I danced for many years, I still dance sometimes, it allows us to free our souls. It's all about freedom, freedom of expression, the ability to be who we truly are with no shame, to be precisely who we wish to be. So that's what this uh, connotes. And also the unity of human beings, of our bodies and our souls with nature itself. And so I see us very much as creatures of the wild, as tree people, so to speak. That's why you <laughs> see the figures and the branches. They're just gently touching one another. Wow. So. Very nice, very nice. And thank you, thank you, thank you, Nancy. And then this one. All aboard the Freedom Train. Will you travel with me to a quiet place where freedom sings its song in soft refrains? Will you travel with me to a mountaintop where the fragrant air spreads soft touch bliss with ease? Will you travel with me to a village green where your long-held hanging shadows fade away? Will you travel with me to a dreamlike land where rainbows share their beauty dipped in joy? Will you travel with me to a blue lagoon where hearts are cleansed by truth too clear to fear? I want to travel to a quiet place where freedom sings its song in soft refrains. Will you travel with me? Very good. All right. There's an explanation, a short one, I think, for the train, actually. If you oh, can. Okay. I, and I just want I just want to watch the time for you because I know you had you had an. Uh, oh. I'll stay longer if I have to, just okay. so I Okay, okay, so go ahead, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the train, if you click on the eye, um, not the arrow, but rather the eye for information. Let me um, click this. 
to do that yeah. I have to click I have to click on the piece itself oh, and then I'll click on that and then I'll pause it there you go okay yeah um I mean maybe you'd like to read it Carolyn do you want to read it go ahead I painted the freedom train after seeing a tiny three by five inch postcard rendering of Monet's La Trin Dan's La Neige. Deeply moved by what the work invoked within me, I was inspired to create my own train painting. Trains have always fascinated me. They can be symbolic of myriad things, freedom, adventure, grave danger, romance, and more. As a child, I often travel via train from Toronto, Canada to visit beloved family in Chicago. This was pure magic for me. As I have suggested, there are profoundly painful historical happenings that can be associated with trains. There was the remarkable Underground Railroad, which could not avail itself of the safety, convenience, and comfort of physical trains. As well, there, there was the unspeakable horror of the Nazi Holocaust, whereby innocent people were transported to death camps via cattle trains. In my mind's eye and heart, passenger trains intended for touring, vacationing, and traveling to desired destinations represent freedom of the spirit. They create possibilities for human connection and provide calm spaces for viewing and being amazed by the glories of our nat natural kingdom. Trains Clearly, house no harm. Okay. All right. Very, very, very beautiful. That's that's a great insight as well. What trains were meant for and what they wound up to do. Two different things. Yeah, yeah. All right. And then the last piece here. Yeah, I, um, my husband and I went to uh, an area in uh, downtown Toronto where they have uh, artisan shops and festivals, music festivals, art festivals, uh, performances and whatnot. And I spotted this sculpture, this creation that just blew me away. <laughs> I thought everything and everybody is included in this peace symbol. I stood there just staring. And I thought I have to capture it. I'm not a photographer. I, haven't, I, 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 I love taking photos, but I thought this just says so much. It says everything that I wish to say pretty well about unity. So this um, is sort of the preface to the poem that I call Longing. Longing. It has been long that I have longed and rawly cried a freedom song. Oh, how I've longed, longed to spread the love that sprouts the fertile green of newborn leaves, that scents the fragrant essence of the ever welcome spring. Oh, how I've longed, longed to spread the love that paints the unabashed bold redness of the cardinal's sublime, those birds of flight that glide with whimsy, call so sweetly, full and wise, to simply say hello. Oh, how I've longed, longed to spread the love that taps the rhythmic beats on drums of purpose so profound that tears flow free of shame, that soothe and sway my willing soul like bamboo in a breeze. Oh, how I've longed, longed to spread the love that makes the splashing sounds of joy and bliss at every waiting water's shore that holds our aqua, silver seas, and quiet rivers thoughtfully with care. Yes, I have longed and longed again within my soul each generous day there is the call of longing me, who sees us all as golden sunlight, golden strands spun one by one, woven into timeless threads of endless possibility. 
as beauty waiting night till dawn to shower its rays of hopefulness upon our trembling dreams. We are a quilt of majesty, of colors bright and black and white, enlightening. We are a quilt of human oneness, seeking, longing, craving to be wrapped in arms of truth. Oh, how I've longed, longed for every one of us to gaze at glory's eyes, to see with courage, I am you and you, yes, you are also part of me. Oh, how I've longed, yes, I have longed for freedom yet to be. May freedom come to you and you and you and you and Thank you. Thank you. By taking time to understand the situation clearly. All right. Okay, so I'm going to open it up to the floor. You guys, I'm going to ask you if you want to make a comment to Nancy about her pieces, about her poems, please share your thoughts about them. You just unmute yourself and then you can speak. Wendy, you're unmuted. Did you want to say something? Well, um, the poetry is uh, very, very beautiful. I got, I got to admit, I've recently started doing some poetry myself not tying it to the paintings, but kind of uh, giving me a spiritual release. And uh, the painting of uh, the train, uh, the locomotive uh, coming from the past to the future, it seems to me, forging mm -hmm. ahead. You know, uh, I love that painting. And um, uh, her poetry is, uh, I don't know how to explain it in words. It's uh, very symbolic, very intriguing, uh, very hopeful. It gives you a, a positive sense with the pictures. I love the pic the photographs with the um, poetry. I love that. And I think she did a fantastic job. Oh, thank you. She has a, a very brilliant mind. Uh, everybody here is so, uh, so smart. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for those yeah. encouraging words and, and, and right. it's just wonderful. Thank you guys for the for that feedback. Um mm -hmm. does anybody else want to make a comment? Anand, I think you have yeah. you unmuted yourself. Yeah. I I like this freedom train. <laughs> Very nice, beautiful, great thing. And I love your poetry also. It is very fortunate that you're a painter as well as a poet. Uh, you are writing poetry. I like Thank it very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very much. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, Bill, uh, you unmuted yourself. Did you have to? Did you have a comment? Oh, I just think that her artwork is phenomenal, and I love the dancers, and I love the poetry that goes along with that. The train. Um, I love the sense of loneliness and cold, and the travel. It's a mm -hmm. uh, Beautiful piece, and your words are phenomenal. I just want oh, to say that. Bill, you can't imagine how you've moved my heart. Thank you so, so very much. You means, means you're means the world to me. Thank you. Your work is phenomenal. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Cool, you're cool. Welcome. All right. Does anybody else want to give feedback to Nancy? Nancy, thank you so much for, for sharing your poetry your philosophy, your imagery, and your heart. Thank um, you so much. Thank you. You're so welcome, Carolyn. Just <laughs> love, love you, and uh, happy, happy Juneteenth, and yeah. uh, thank you so much. Cool. Of all, your heart. all right. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, Oops. We live in a little village right outside of Kalamazoo, Michigan, uh, the home of Western Michigan University and uh, Kalamazoo College. A uh, very rich, rich art community. And uh, we love it. We've been here for 30 years. But I started my uh, career as an art teacher. I grew up in South Central Mississippi. Uh, during the 60s, I was a teenager. So I 
witnessed a lot of things that I questioned. A lot of things I questioned as a young wow. man. And at, at one point, I was asking some questions about missionaries that came to our all-white Southern Baptist Church. And I couldn't understand why the missionaries had photographs of them over in African countries with uh, black people. And when I was asking my dad about that, he told me, he said, son, he said, uh, don't ever talk that way in front of white people around here even our relatives. He said, it would not be safe for you. So I experienced many, many things as a young man. Uh, the painting that I have here, I I ask so many times when I hear people say, I really, you know, make America great. My question has always been, tell me when it was great. Tell me when America was great. Because to me, great is the ultimate for everyone to prosper. And in this painting is a field of workers in a cotton field with a church in the background right. and a silhouette of a white man with a gun over them. And you can't see it, but the young man is wearing a gold Gucci necklace. I I love putting Easter eggs. I like to hide Easter eggs in my paintings. So I've got him wearing that Gucci. And back then, Gucci wasn't even around. But the point I make is, Sometimes when we say when America was great, it wasn't great. And I like little symbolic things. And you can notice that the painting is hanging on a wall and the graffiti underneath it. But also there is a hat. And I don't know if anybody thinks that's symbolic of anything or not. And there's also a Bible laying there. And I don't know if anyone thinks that Bible is a symbolic, but uh, that Bible happens to have a passage in there from uh, 2 Corinthians, if that helps you to pl uh, to bring it all together. Not 2 Corinthians, but 2 Corinthians. So uh, some of my uh, works, <laughs> if I can use a term I use very frequently. Sometimes my work will piss people off. And it's okay because if they are, that means that I've touched something inside of someone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh wow. This is this is something. Mark, this is this is uh, I love how you how you depicted this whole piece. Let me let me see how what um what is the information that you have on here? Okay, so it's a digital canvas drawing. Under the sweltering sun, a family labors to pick cotton under the belief that they have escaped the clutches of oppression from a dominant class. Yet the spectral presence of enduring control lingers, sarcastically questioning who truly benefits from their toil. Wow, wow. Uh, so so and this the Bible you were talking about was the one here. And I would suggest that this this part here is the digital part of the painting, whereas here you've actually painted stuff. And then here mm -hmm. I, I just think how you put it together is just great because it's almost as if you you've taken a picture of something that happened in real life, you know, like somebody in real life went and drew this on the wall <laughs> you know with, exactly. some, with some chalk so it's it's a it's really good impact um does does anybody have any uh, if i might art? if i might if i might add this when america was great there's a question mark there folks yeah it's not a statement it's a question yeah yeah and and you have the t looking like a crucifix right Yep, in the background you can see Jesus hanging on the wall. It's a blue Jesus. The little church. 
here. <laughs> Is that it? Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And what is what is here in his hand here? What is that? Is that uh, the uh, it's cotton? just it's yeah, it's just some cotton. Yeah, he's got cool. a, he's wearing torn overalls. Okay. Uh the, I wanted the I really wanted to do a major contrast between the Gucci necklace mm -hmm. and right. the rags that he's wearing. Right, right. Okay. And according to and according to my eighth grade Mississippi history book, uh, later in the year, the uh, slave owner will probably buy him a new pair of overalls. So just to let you know, hmm. that's from the history book that I uh, was taught Mississippi history back in 1962. Wow. And the okay. way I have that, I have that textbook. Wow. 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 That's something. Okay. Any any comments from the the attendees or questions? Yes, yes I have one. Um, okay. Mark, I really, first of all, I'd like to commend you on this phenomenal piece. Um, I like the central figure because I, I see him holding a bunch of cotton, and it's almost as if he's presenting a bouquet of cotton to the mm -hmm. the overseer. If it makes sense, it's almost like a bouquet of flowers, but instead you have this, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, like a, a double entendre. I, I'm not sure of the term, but it's almost like that. It's symbolic of a bouquet of flowers as opposed yeah. to that cotton. And, and, uh, Pirelli, you're, you're absolutely right. And a lot of people, if you've never seen cotton before, it's made into a piece of clothing. The cotton bowls that the cotton comes out of, when it opens up, it becomes like thorns. Right. And when the cotton was being picked, it would cut into the hands. So you might notice there's a little bit of blood on his yeah. hand as yes. he's holding that. And I love that. That Got bouquet it. of right. cotton that he's presenting to the owner, but he's also giving him his blood. And, and that's a good analogy. I also like the, the combination of that the American flag, if you see it, the red, white, and blue, right in that general area. Yep. Yeah, that's really, really nice, nicely done. Mm -hmm. yep. I'm missing the I'm missing the red, white, and blue. The red, the cut, the blue overalls. The, the uh, is that an over, this is part of his overalls, right? Or the bag? That's his bag, right? Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, right there. And then you have okay. the white and the red right beside. Right. So they right, right. You know, Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You're, you're... I, I think, uh, thank you, Prelly. We have a lot of comments we've come in. I think right. Oyemi wanted to say something. Oyemi, okay. you could unmute yourself. Yeah. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Mm -hmm. wow. sorry, sorry that I came late. I mean, I like this uh, painting. Uh, is it mixed media? I mean, I learned that it's a uh, digital uh, painting. Is it? Uh, yes. Digital. It's digital. They are digital. Okay. I like I like the painting on the wall and the Bible and the other gadget at the, the bottom. So that I mean, the message is so clear. And I mean, I want to ask the the tax master that we are looking at the background is it like in, in blue, white, or, or gray? Uh, I'm sorry, what, Bessa? The tax yeah. master, the, the man yeah. in the that will have the back view, right? You know, he could be white, he could be black because okay. many times the slave owners would use because, other I mean, slaves. The, the picture is like gray and the the people in the background they are in color that's why i'm asking the question mm -hmm. oh I, I see what you're asking oh yeah I mean, he's he's saying because this this guy here is in black and white whereas the others are in color in full color yeah. right he's but it looks slavery. like it looks like it looks like you know his hair is straight and his his skin here is white 
but he is he he is he he himself doesn't have color because it's a black and white image and these guys have the color and even the cotton has color but his gun doesn't have color right let me go i back. wanted the yeah. i wanted the overseer to be transparent right i wanted the even though the people that are working the fields they may not even know he's there because they are so engrossed into what they're being forced to do. Right. So the overseer is always there, whether he's there physically or emotionally or even in a bizarre spiritual way. The overseers were always, always there. there. Mm -hmm. So I like the way you treat it like a, the overseer is like a ghost. Is that yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah, I like the exactly. idea. The real worker, the real human being. Yeah, mm -hmm. very good. Very good. Thank you guys for picking those things up. Right, that's great. So that's how that's how artists look at other art, and also people who aren't artists, they look at it and and they'll they'll feel something, they'll see something, and and it'll capture something in their minds. So very good. Thank you for those comments, Bill and Oyemi. Wendy has something that she wants to say. I know it. Go ahead, Wendy. <laughs> uh, well, when I, when I see the red and black hat. I think of uh, violence, bloodshed, and blood, sweat, and tears coming mm -hmm. from the hat and symbolic blood, death, and like the souls, the souls are being depleted. It's a cover up. You, when you wear a hat, you cover something. Mm -hmm. You don't, you know, you cover the truth. And the Bible is Liello and. The Bible to me, I don't want to do anybody insult, please, is a hypocrisy to this. Because in the Bible, all created equal, everyone should be kind to each other. I don't know about Corinthians uh, 1 or 2 that he's talked about. Exactly. I, I have, uh, if I could, there was a point in time when one of our top political individuals was speaking to an all-Christian college and oh. wanted to let them know that he was a Christian. And when he spoke, he, instead of saying uh, Second Corinthians, he said 2 Corinthians, which told everybody in the office, in the audience, that he didn't have a clue what the Bible, how it was ah. interpreted by real Christians. So it was just one of my little uh, pieces that I put in there when people mm -hmm. want to be something and they don't know anything about it. Mm, okay. Yeah, nice. All right. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you for those wonderful comments. I want to say uh, something. I just yes. want to oh, Bill. Mm -hmm. I just want to comment on that. I love this piece that you did. I can feel the transparency of, of the time that you, when I'm looking at this, I come from a Southern background and I've seen scenes similar to this as far as the housing and the background and the woods. And I've seen the people, I understand it's like looking back hundreds of years ago and seeing what people had to go through. And I love the way that you did the overseer because the overseer is not necessarily there, but the presence of the racism and the hatred and all that is there at the same time. I love the way that you did the hats down there and you indicated it in a subtle manner. I like how you say when, uh, when America was great because we all are still, still trying to figure that out and we're not trying to go back to this image that you have here. I just think it's phenomenal. It's good. Mm -hmm. hey, oh, oh, yeah, me. Hello. Hey, yeah, wow. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Wow. Oh, yeah, me? You have to unmute yourself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry. I'm, I think the, the, the Bible in the, in the composition have a relevancy. I remember a quotation from the movie uh, Root that one of the um, slaves said that uh, every time, every Sunday is when their master come back from church that he become more vicious in the in maltreating the slaves. So I like so uh, that the angle I saw the Bible so that even we, we as far as much as the southern are um, so religious. The, that I mean, the, the Christianity doesn't make them have sympathy with their own fellow man being. They even be more vicious. 
in maltreating the slave, even when they come back from church. So that the relevant of the Bible there. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for that, Oyemi. Um, any other comments on that? Anan, you have yourself un unmuted. Did you want to say something? Anan? <laughs> I like this very much. White, cotton, I think cotton flowers they are. And uh, the middleman may eyes and uh, this tongue. I like that also. Mm -hmm. Very expressive piece. Very mm -hmm. expressive piece. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Anand. Pat, did you want to say yes? I just wanted to say I had ancestors uh, with cotton plantations. So this is very moving to me. Um, so thank you for doing it. Wow. Wow. And and Mark, I, I didn't know that when what when I was when I was in um I guess when was that that was in graduate school yes I was in graduate school and my daughters got accepted graduate school was in North Carolina in Chapel Hill and and they got accepted to a school in I guess it was also in North Carolina but when I would drive to visit them I saw for the first time fields of cotton i never saw cotton before i never saw a field of cotton before so i'm looking looking i said how is it that there's snow on the on the on the field because it looked like it was a snowfall and then my friend said no that's cotton i'm like wow but when you just said that that there's like like thorns and pricklies on the cotton I, I didn't realize. I always thought of cotton as like you go to the store and buy cotton balls, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that is, is and it doesn't hurt. I didn't know that, that it caused people to bleed. Yeah. I When I was a, a young young man, I would pick cotton. I would go and pick cotton to write, get money for school clothes. So I, I experienced that. But a cotton bowl, if you just Google it, it's going to look like a big old dark bulb. And when the yeah. cotton comes out, it starts doing this. Right. And my fingers become just like knives. They just yeah. cut into you. Yeah. And you have to yeah. reach inside. So, uh, wow. yeah, picking cotton was not was not all the fun stuff people wanted it to make it to wow. be. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had, yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you for enlightening me. You know, I'm, I'm the first to know. I didn't know. I, I didn't know what it looked like in real life, but then I did from, but I never got out the car because I was actually scared to get out the car to even go touch it because I said, maybe so, maybe I'll get in trouble, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah. Okay, okay. Anybody, any other comments, guys? If not, then we're going to move on to, we have next, Prelly. Prelly. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Again, my name is um, Prelly Anthony Williams. I'm a native Washingtonian. I reside in Washington, D.C. right now, even though I lived in New York for 26 years. Um, I'm um, a multidisciplinary visual artist. Um, I work in uh, various mediums. Uh, but my piece, that current piece right here, is called Galveston, uh, 1865. Um, I imagine myself, first of all, when I heard about the passing of the bill to make this a national holiday, um, I did some research because I, I knew very little about Juneteenth. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and what I've um, discovered is that um, the, everybody, just about everybody knows the history now, but I heard people talking about the cotton and how they never seen any. I've only seen it maybe twice. That was only one piece, an actual piece with the, the little vinyls, you call them vines or thorns. But to make a long story short, this is a self-portrait, but I'm time traveling. And I depicted, I imagined myself if 1865 as a slave working on a cotton field. And um, I'm looking because the lady in the midground is looking towards me and she's like basically saying, using her expression, 
do you see what's going on? And the kid in the middle, in the background, in the middle of the canvas, he's looking and saying, wow, he's looking in amazement. And I'm looking in kind of like disgust and amazement and shock at the same time. And the reason why is because there's other, there, there's going to be two more pieces to the series, but I haven't created them yet, but I know the concept of what I want to depict. So they all see the Union troops marching into Galveston. And then this is a, some, a wonder because they've never seen Union troops. They, they're wondering what's going on. But the people ahead of them, in a, in, like if you were look, I'm looking towards the, the right. So they were the people in the further on in the distance. They're celebrating. They're jumping up and down, enjoying the show. And these people are wondering why they're jumping up and down. And we're over here working hard because they haven't received the news yet. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and um, this piece is um, what it's a water-based oil. It's created water-based oil paint. It was experiment. Um, this is my first time working with it, the medium, and it's on canvas. And the only thing on here that isn't paint is the the, the text, the Galveston. That star is actually painted, but that Galveston, um, that was um printed on you know on the um, computer, printed out on the printer. And just glued it on the um to the collar, mm -hmm. and I put that collar on there to, to indicate that this this is a slave, even though it probably wasn't necessary. But I needed that to demonstrate the Galveston, um, you know, illustrate that part what's going on. All right. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Probably did, did did you say that this was you time traveling? So is this sort of like yeah, almost basically a I actually picked it myself if I okay. was in that during that time period. And that was me on that field. And I'm just getting the news of what's going on. Mm. I would probably be kind of teed off a little bit of everything because I'm like, wow, we just, we just getting this message. And this happened two and a half years ago. And we're just finding out. Yeah. I mean, imagine you. How would you feel if you could just right. got the information late? That's almost like the boss coming to you saying you got a raise two and a half years ago, but you just finding out. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just have to use that analogy. <laughs> right. And you've been right. struggling and scraping like, man, I just need a raise. And you hear it all the time. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's the way I think of it. <laughs> Good. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. I, 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 I just wanted to say what strikes me the most for me about this is the the edges, the edges between your hair, your face, your your profile and the background i i i just it, to me that is like on you know just that you have those colors in there and that you work those colors through like through even part of her garment and also part of part of the shackle here around the neck mm. you know but it's like it is very it, very impactful very useful and it just it it's it works it works for me and even okay. your even your eyes here you know it's like you're not looking straight at us but you you yeah. i can feel your eyes staring right you know? mm -hmm. yeah and any other uh, comments or questions about prelly's painting i think uh Burrell, the first thing that hit me was that collar that collar around mm. uh, your neck. Okay. <laughs> and I thought, in the writing that was on it. Mm. And then, of course, the cotton. Cotton is, it, it's so soft. It's so mm -hmm. soft. And mm -hmm. the contrast between that and that metal or leather mm. collar mm. could have been either one. Right. Total contrast. So, the texture and the feeling of it. Wow. Mm -hmm. They're hot and soft. Okay, now, okay, I love it. Love it, Mark. Uh, one thing you mentioned earlier about the cotton. Um, I, I <clears throat> excuse me. I want. I don't know. It's something about. I had to put that cotton in there because I don't think it would work any other way. This is my analogy. Um, and like I said, I only seen it twice, and I didn't know about that. That thorny type um, part of it. But I have ancestors who, I mean, people right now, that there's one, my mother-in-law, 
she used to live in Tennessee. She remembers picking cotton. And I said, wow, I've never even seen a cotton field. And I heard on Carolyn mention that cotton field. I've never seen one. And mm -hmm. it's just amazing to hear these stories. Mm -hmm. well, thank mm -hmm. you very much. Mm -hmm. wow. wow, you're welcome. Thank you, Pearlie, for sharing this piece with us and the story behind it and your idea, your vision. Yes, yes, oh, Yemi. Yeah. Yeah, and Pearlie. Uh, yes. What year are you traveling back to back in time? Because 1865. I can see your, your, your head is not, eh? 1865. It's on the collar. You probably I, mean, I, know. You I mean, what year are you in for you oh. to travel back? Because <laughs> what year am I in now? No, I'm what what, what year are you like? Are you imagining you're 25? That's what he's asking. Oh, wait, they, yeah. wait, my age, my age. Oh, that's yeah. a good question. About wait, <laughs> maybe, maybe 30. No, because, sorry, um, not, your, not your age. What uh, year? Because your the hairstyle is not uh, this same. Uh, uh, it's not of this same uh, two um, millennium. So to me, look as if you travel back in the seventies when we used to have Afro. Yeah, yeah, it looks like the 70s. <laughs> you're right. You're right. That's a very good um uh, point. That's actually yeah. um back in the seventies. I did have an Afro. Um, yeah. my first year in college. So yeah, I do have pictures. Similar to that, the only thing is I just changed the complexion to depict, you know, that time period, basically. So, yeah, that, um, I just, that was what I just noticed. That mm -hmm. the 70s style, when we used to have Afro wig. That's right. So you travel from 70s <laughs> into the 18s. Yeah, that's right, 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 right. There you go. There you go. Very good that's analysis. nice. You, yeah, see, you see how much stories can be inside yeah. of one piece, you know. Yeah, yes. <laughs> somebody's observing <laughs> Okay. Wow. Very observant. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very you. cool. Very cool. All right. All right. So we we're gonna move along. Thank you. Thank you, Prelly, for bringing this oh, piece to us, oh, helping us enjoy. This is great, oh, Juneteenth. I'm sorry, <laughs> Colin and everybody. I just want to add one little tidbit. Um, if you notice the color of the shirt or the garment, upper garment I'm wearing, that's the yeah. Union color. It isn't uh, like beige or whatever, like the cotton or what you call it, mud cloth for the um for right. So that's the representation also as well as the union, you know, supporting okay. the union. Okay, okay. That's cool. Thank cool. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so so next up is going to be Oyemi. Oyemi, you're next. I'm gonna bring up your pieces, Oyemi. And tell us where you're calling from now. You're the traveling man. I'm, I'm, in the, I'm, I'm in the traveler. I'm from London, England. In the United, United Kingdom. And right now you're, you, you, you're in the UK right now. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Because sometimes, sometimes you're traveling. Sometimes you're yeah, in... I'm in the UK at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So these are your, let me see if I can capture all. Oh, it's just these two, yeah? Yeah, these two, yeah. Yeah, okay. So there, so which one do you want to talk about? You, you, you choose. Okay, how about, how about this one? Billy Holiday, Strange Okay, food. the Billy Holiday, the, so when I was preparing for this, I just saw the open call for June team. And mm -hmm. that's why I just I switch from what I want to do before to do this job for this uh, exhibition. Okay. Um, and I read about the life of um, Billy Holiday and many of the artists and people of the of our era. Um, people before the I mean the people that took part in the civil rights movement. So I read mm -hmm. about it and uh, I will know about the fun game that the people are playing then that they will kidnap the black people during the day and at night they set them at loose. I watched that on the documentary of Mississippi something, Mississippi is born eh? where they kidnap and black during the day and the KKK will set them loose during the, at night and chase them as a sport with the dog and when they catch them, they hang them and so those, I'm just trying to depict the bad days of America before the people are free I mean, I mean, black people are not fully free. We know that during the era of um, Donald Trump, when they killed um, George Floyd and uh, other people, innocent people that have been killed. But in those days, it's worse that 
I mean, it's, it's not against the law to keep black people, but since then the freedom of I mean, since the June team, black people are no more sports game for racist people. So that's and then on this uh, painting, uh, the life of Billy Holiday, I, I won't struggle with the uh, drug and addictions. It's part of well, the, I mean, like my this time of my work is the <coughs> roses and tones. The turn in his life of uh, Billy Holiday is a uh, addiction and the tons of life that many black people endure in America is the racism. Mm -hmm. So the rose part of it is that uh, um, black people are free now. Life is not what you're supposed to be, but it's no more what it used to be. So the black, we have uh, from black senator to black president, life is not as bad as it was before the dream team. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. nice beautiful well i'm gonna let you talk about both and then we'll we'll get comments any questions that the attendees have they can ask but let's okay. talk about this one now this one is the about the prince i mean i like the, the song purple rain so when I was composing the, any, when I want to do any project, I will read about the history of my subject. I like to know their background. So I, the, when I read about the Prince and learned about this uh, break up marriage and the loss of the baby and his drug addiction that hand his life as well. So, the roses in, in his life is the fame and fortune he made from music industry and the purple rain uh, the title of the painting is a uh, prince purple rain music rain so uh, i try to the music notes are falling like rain and uh, the body of the of of him will soak with water uh, with uh, water from rain so that i'm trying to illustrate Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cool. I just brought it up so people could see the description and so forth. Wow. Gorgeous. Okay, guys, let's give Oyemi a feedback about these two pieces here. How does it strike you? He's got some beautiful, this is some beautiful work. I, I, I like everything Ozempi does, so I'm biased anyway. <laughs> but um, you know, I think his artwork is portrays and the way what he does is phen again phenomenal. Also, but um, I like how he did the Billy Holiday Strange Fruit. I've always wanted to, uh, to do a, a picture similar to that, dealing with the strange fr the fruit subject matter. But I haven't gotten to it yet. And uh, but I I love the way that he incorporated his work and made it his own and his own story by depicting what he's done. Mm -hmm. And Prince, Prince is off the chain. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love, the, I love how he created with with the his uh, incorporated the flowers and the, and the vines and the you know the uh, the life that runs through the the, the imagery in there. So mm -hmm. um, it, he just always you know his his stuff is just I just like his stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I agree. Uh, yeah. Your your work is phenomenal. It really, really is. And right. Billy Holiday and Prince, uh, the the two pieces are about their music, their struggles, but it's about their humanity. And I think those are the things that grab me when I see your work. I mean, I'm like going, man, I'd I'd like to see some of that stuff hanging in my house. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah so yeah. awesome. Yeah. And and these are done, these are all done in, let me just look, I believe in the oil. Yeah, these are all mm -hmm. easy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. They are Amazing. All right. So yeah. I mean, the, um, on the hanging, the hanging fruits, the dead body, if you remember the painting of the Renaissance, 
they used to put halo around the yeah. head of the people. So I just yeah. put halo wow. on the church yeah. to honor the unfortunate yeah. people that uh, they let their life down so that the, the black people of this day can enjoy wow. freedom. Yeah. Wow. So that's a good halo. Yeah. Mm. And also I like I like how you put the negative space here to yes. match the the fire yeah. fiery background. Smart. But it's still wow. the, very, 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 yeah, very smart. Good. I like that. Right. Yes. Thank you. And and in this piece, I, I noticed even though the the prominent colors are the red, orange, yellow, there's there's at least a hint of the blue and green. Yeah. You know, to me that that's always a good balance of of structure and color balance. Okay. Very so I try to I try to use color to convey yeah. message. Uh, yeah. we, we know about Mississippi 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 is burning. So the era of when black people are being lynched and killed is a hot time, which we are see for the black people are in fire. I mean, yeah. literally they throw them in fire, they do a lot of stuff. So that I'm trying to, so that's why the red is so strong yeah. in the competition. Yeah. yeah, that's very, very good, very good. All right, the, anybody, any, any other? I, I think that the purple rain for him, my goodness, is just crazy good. Oh my God. All the musical notes floating around, right? And the the raindrops. Raindrops are not that hard to, not that easy to paint. You know, right. you right. got a whole bunch of them, you know, and they're all, there's just, it's very, re, very realistic, very believable, surreal. Right, but you feel like it's the truth. Like his hands, like you're giving flowers and thorns. Just the idea of flowers and thorns, you're yeah. you're you're extending what people's ideas are of flowers. When you think of flowers as a symbol, it can be symbolic of so many things, and you use them as a symbol to represent what's happening in the painting. What is that part of the painting doing? Is creating music, which is usually beautiful. It's something people enjoy. It's just like we enjoy flowers, you know, and his hands are creating that beauty. And it's almost as if he's creating the flower, you know. So, yeah, and, and his head, you know, his head is a big blossom of a flower, you know. So I, like, I can totally get into it myself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like your own idea of illustrating the hand, the hand being flower, being um, creating music. I mean, I've never thought like that, but I like yeah. the way you did yeah. that. That's that's very beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Thank, yeah. thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I I think all of us, all of us, whether we consciously know it or not, everything around us symbolizes something for us, whether we realize it or not, you know, like for me, trees represents and symbolizes strength and nurturing and, you know, all positive things, you know, and so when I see trees being cut down or trimmed or, or you know, just burnt, you know, I feel bad, you know, I feel like, oh, no, even though they maybe have a good reason to do it, it just feels like that's a part of the earth. But, um, Anyway, I, I just love that piece, as as I said, because I have a guitar. I play the guitar, and it feels like when I'm playing, you know, it feels like something beautiful is coming out, and it can, rep it can be represented in a flower. It, but it's like my hands are creating that thing that I'm experiencing, you know? And so it's just like a flower will create a beautiful fragrance. Your hands here are creating the sound. You know, Thank so that's, you. Okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I, when I read the, uh, your contribution on the magazine, I mean, yeah. that's, very, that's very fantastic because you put more thought into it than what I did. So yeah. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I, um, I, that, that's what I do. That's, that's my job. <laughs> okay, <laughs> to really yeah. look, 
to really look and try to track with what it is the artist is saying. What are you really saying? You know, and then I make, and then I ask for permission. Is this okay? <laughs> you know, that I, I mean, I, mean I, I love it. I mean, but because you are, you used to writing, I mean, a statement. So you are more creative than I do. So I like, I appreciate your contribution on that. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. My pleasure. It, it, it's like, like I tell you guys, my love is working with you. You know, I could do my own work and sell a lot and you know what, but it's, there's a difference of my joy and our joy, you know, okay. our joy. So, all right. Anybody else? Karen, want to yes. Okay. BJ, I'd like to share something with you. Uh, the famous uh, American artist, uh, Norman Rockwell, he did a whole series of paintings in 1965 one of those paintings was about the three civil rights workers that were killed that they talk about in Mississippi burning. Mm. If you Google Norman Rockwell murder in Mississippi, you will see the painting that he did. It really surprised me when I just accidentally uh, came upon it. Mm. You don't think of Norman Rockwell doing those kind of paintings. M murder in Mississippi. Murder in Mississippi is the name of it. Okay. And it's actually a painting of the three civil rights workers being killed by the Ku Klux Klan. Oh. Wow. Okay. Okay. Got it. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for all of your your inputs, guys. Um, Anand, did you want to did you want to mention something or no? So this I like the color and concept very much. Wonderful yeah. piece. Thank you. Thank you for, for for that. All right. So let's see now who who didn't speak. And Sinja. And Sinja. My name is Janice is Sinja McCaskill. And I am in let's see, Florida. Um, it's about ninety eight degrees today. But anyway, <laughs> um, my artwork deals with uh, a lot of um, stories that I heard as I was growing up uh, as a kid. Isenja, uh, I have to explain. Isenja oh. is my artist name. Okay. Um, when there I you go. When I graduated from college, um, I was already a self-taught artist, and I went to college. When I went to college and graduated, I decided to, um, since it was such a uh, change for me in my artwork, I took my first name and I scrambled it backwards. So it's my uh, art name and I signed all my artwork with Essentia. It's actually my first name, Janice Scramble. So, right, um, got you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, I grew up in Florida um, and um, over the years I painted a lot of different uh, genres of art, but I started doing family research and discovered all these amazing stories that I grew up with. Um, stories that I, about people that I never even met before, but I imagined to reimagine them from the stories that I was told, um, I began to start painting them into my work. And um, this particular piece uh, deals with uh, one of the herons in my family, uh, whose name was Susan. Um, we called her Aunt Susan. Um, she actually was always very courageous and, and made decisions for um, people or whatever. And um, they listened to her. So mm -hmm. after after uh, emancipation and um, they got the notice that they were free, um, this is a little painting of the story that I, I created um, on wood. Uh, I created about her. <laughs> going around uh, the community and saying, okay, we have to get up. I want everyone to come. We're going to um, gather together, put on your best clothing, uh, bring whatever talent or skill with you, and we're going to seek freedom. And uh, basically, that's what this uh, story is about. Um, I'm more of a visual art art, uh, visual art storyteller, so I, I tell stories on on uh my support canvas wood or whatever. So this is um this is uh the migration 
um, of the people that followed this heroine on Susan. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what this is about. The canopy of trees are sort of like the guardians that are protecting them as they progress to freedom. Um, and uh, as you can see, there's the, the clay roads uh, mm -hmm. that are in the south. Um, and our, everyone brought what their skill was uh, mm -hmm. that they had. And that's my, um, that's my expression of this piece. Um, I'm really, I'm really empowered and inspired by all those stories that I've been told as growing up and the many stories that I, I read and find out as I do my family research about family members. So I, I express that in my artwork. Nice, nice. Wow. I, I, I love the fact that you, you, you've painted her coat so beautifully and the dress with the flowers on it and so forth and the and her leather bags right you've got it all and this one behind her with the dog and a little cat in his pocket <laughs> so well, that's, that's my grandfather it's a portrait of a, a picture of my grandfather who was a fox hunter he's a fox uh, so that's hunter. a fox he trained okay. dogs yeah he trained dogs for the fox hunt okay and, um yeah so he I just put a little comic relief in with the with the little fox in his pocket. Okay, okay, cool. <laughs> but cool. Um, Susan Susan was a seamstress, mm. and that's that's what she bought with her her talent of being a seamstress. And the bags are her her goods that she carried with her to freedom that she's going to utilize. Um, I guess to to uh, to become. Um, a person that is has purpose. Um, right. Each person is seek, they're all seeking freedom, but not only freedom, but they're bringing with them what they already have. So they're not right. coming so much looking for something because they're bringing with them um, their talent and skills. So mm -hmm. uh, that's that's my work. And wow, it's beautiful. And you have this one with. So he's a good farmer. He's the one with the chickens, and it looks like. Peacocks? Are those little peacocks? Yep, yeah, that's a farmer. Uh, one of my family members was a farmer, and he bought his chickens. He bought the guinea, uh, the guinea uh, hens with him. Okay. And mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. wow. And this one with her baking her bunt cake in the She's back. She's bringing a cake because she loved to cook, and she cooked very well. She's bringing uh -huh. that talent, those talents with her. And there's a nurse that's bringing her yeah. talents with her. Yeah. So. Yeah. And back on and on and on. Very, very inspiring. Very inspiring. And I love how you have the canopies, as you said. They're like guardian guardians. Right. It's like angels are, are guardian yeah. over them as they as they progress to freedom. So yeah. 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 Very beautiful. Okay. This is this is wonderful. Very nice. I love how you have the bark of the trees even. So so <laughs> tell me, is is you, you said that you 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 grew up in Florida. I grew up in Florida. Okay. My family so, migrated to Florida. Right. Right. From Georgia. Okay. So the the trees that are here, they're from your heart. I could feel it only because I know here these these trees that here this part of it is very you know warm weather. Very warm weather. <laughs> very warm yes, weather. Very warm weather. Yeah. Very yeah. hot weather. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I and I love the the hound dog. Very nice. It's it's just wonderful piece that you bring here for us to enjoy. Really, it's beautiful. Let me let me look at the. Um, I don't want you to tell me. I wanna I wanna look it up myself. Right. And so the the title is Seeking Hope on Canopy Road. Acrylic on wood, very very cool, very cool. So you 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 painted you painted um on wood with yes. the with the gesso on it or the bare I wood. I painted with wood. I wanted to paint with wood because I was using all the trees, so I wanted the the wood ah. uh to be a part of it since it's part of a tree. Okay, okay. And it's gessoed a couple okay. of times, and it's acrylic paint on gesso. Okay, okay, okay. And then it says 
I'll just read it out to everyone. The painting Seeking Hope on Canopy Road is paying homage to the ancestors that left familiar seeking hope in the unknown. With them, they bought their dreams, skills, talents, and hope. Very beautiful. And, and one more question. This, this piece represents a moment in time then before the Juneteenth, I, when I say before the freeing of the slaves or like well, Harriet this... Tubman kind of, because you said she was the heroine. So I want to be clear on, on why the people followed her. Why did they we, not like what 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 did she you know tell us that story because I know there's a story in there. <laughs> they they followed her uh, in my family. She was like um um she was like a, a real thinker. She she would always think things through, and then when she spoke, people listened, mm -hmm. and and they um they followed her. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Basically, uh, she's, she was always like that. She just, um, she would think things through. And I guess she figured, well, we're free now, but we can't stay here. Right. So let's go. Let's go. Right. And let's take whatever talent, skill we have. I want you to put on the best clothing that you have. And let's just walk until we find a place to settle. So basically, um, they were going, they didn't know where they were going. So they uh, went from they went from where to they went from Georgia to Florida. Georgia. Okay, from Georgia. Okay, because I thought from I missed Georgia that to Florida. Okay, um, which is you know, uh, I guess it's, if it's, they heard about the Canopy Road, the Canopy Road was a a place that was was doable because the trees covered mm -hmm. the road. It was cool. There were mm -hmm. breeze. And uh, they were able to, if you could see the, the uh, wood uh, seating on the side, if they got tired, they could sit down and rest right. or whatever. Right. So, right. yeah. Very good. Very good. Great. Thank you. Thank you for, for enlightening us on the canopy road and your grandmother. Great grandmother? Grandmother. My aunt. Your aunt. Okay. Yeah. My my great it's with my great aunt. Your great aunt. I know it's a great in there. Okay, cool. I've asked you so many questions. I don't want to take oh, up no, everybody it's fine. else's no. time. <laughs> I like because I'm sure some of the other attendees <laughs> have those also thoughts and questions about it. So so open up, guys. Let us know how you yes. think. Yeah. Okay, Prelly, and after Prelly is Oyemi. Go ahead. Okay, I'll, I'll try to be brief. Um, Asenja, uh, I like the way that you use the essential figure to draw your, the viewer's eye to, you know, directly into, you know, to the other people in the background. The way you, you compose this is, um, is awesome. Um, that's all I have to say right now. I don't want to prolong it, but I love it. I love that, the way you directed that. Man, Thank on. you. Thank you. Very nice. You're welcome. Oh Thank yeah, you me. So much. Yeah. Hello, Cynthia. I'm so jealous of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I love your work. I mean, very detailed work. How long does it take you to do this? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh probably um I would say about two months. Two months, that's good. What size is this? I'm sorry. The size of the painting. This size, this size is twenty. What is twenty-four by thirty? Yeah. yeah, so it's long. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I say I really I like the painting so much. It's very detailed. I wish I can. I I like to do details work, but I don't have the skill of using acrylic to make this detailed kind of work. So that's why I say I'm so jealous of you. And I like the composition. I mean, like a, in art history class, with the Renaissance um, style of composition that we learn is a triangular shape. Like when you look at the Leonardo da Vinci painting, everything, so Jesus Christ in the middle, and everything is 
tranquil. So eh, most of the Renaissance artists Thank they you. use um rectangular, I mean triangular shape in their composition. So that's why I saw in this painting, and I like the use of perspective way to the background and the details to the chicken and all those tiny i mean i love all the, the tiny details you did so well done and the colorful thank you dress of your uh, your great aunt it's, i mean every, the work is excellent mm -hmm. outstanding mm -hmm. thank you so much thank you i say it's beautiful work very detailed i love the colors and the story behind it is great as, as historically and is wonderful that you can depict this for your family and tell yeah. the story. Yeah. Thank right. you. Thank you, Bill. Wow. Did is, you did you write the story? I haven't written it yet, but I'm th I'm thinking I've had so many people ask me about this story. Um I'm thinking of of how how to incorporate the story into my work as a narrative. So I'm I'm working on it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. It's so rich. I would uh, I'd like to read the story. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thank <Wow>. you. <laughs> Very good. Mark. Again, Mark? Yes. Uh, the name of the painting again was called what? Seeking Hope on Canopy Road. Canopy Road. When I heard Canopy Road and I saw this painting, I thought, that is a song. That is a song about people escaping to a new life. And I was sitting here and I was hearing music when I was looking at this. Wow. Because so many wow. times the, the plight of people, their songs that help them continue to move, to move, whether it's in the cotton fields or whether it's on this canopy road. I just, mm -hmm. uh, I love music. Uh, your Billie Holiday, your Prince, when all of these come together, it becomes like a symphony. It really does. Mm -hmm. I love this work. It's great. Your perspective is just using perspective. Uh, perspective is not easy to use. A lot of times that takes over everything. But these people are moving. They are, you can feel the movement. Great job, young lady. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Mark and Prelly and Bill and Oyemi and Anand and Pat, we I really appreciate y'all doing these these talks together, supporting each other, um, and and the main thing again is that you you get the juice to keep going, you know, to not stop. Whatever mm -hmm. else happens after we all hang up and go our separate ways, who knows what you have to face every day. You know, yeah. but it's nice to know that you have some kind of a respite just to be creative, just to talk about your art, just to listen to see what how I know for me, it's important if I'm painting something or if I'm doing something, I want to know how what do you think? How what, what do you see some of the things that I've said? Some, you know, like Oyemi, he didn't think of the. The, the purple flowers thinking about it creating the music you know it's like but each person brings an individual perspective to an artwork why because it's only us standing on the planet physically we have a different viewpoint there's no way you would have to go into somebody's body and get into their eyes to get and even then you won't get it you know so it's like That's so true. So we have we have the ability to support each other with not an idea of competition, but of just camaraderie and realizing that hey, you know we're we're all in this together. We all just want the same thing to be happy. And then when things aren't happening happening to create that joy, at least we know okay something's wrong over there. Like Patricia, she knows something's wrong over there. 
she's going to go and see what she can do, you know, to, to rectify or to fix or somehow to at least assuage, just to at least make it better instead of worse, you know? So all of us are doing our, I, I, want, I don't want to say duty, but just what we're called to do, we're doing it. You know, we're doing it. Each of you are doing it. You're not playing dead. You know, you, you're really, you're alive. I want to say you're alive and you're creating. Yes, you have your troubles. We all do. But we keep going. We prevail. We keep going. We don't lay down and die. So a lot of pieces all over the place. We have next, next month. I'm hoping we're going to we're going to have the music from Ed Redman right and um, so forth. So so thank you all. If if you any last words before we say good night. I I would just like to thank everyone that joined in today. I got a lot of input, a lot of insight from everyone. From I mean everyone and stuff that I didn't know that I'm, I feel I'm grateful to have learned. And I'm just grateful to be a part of the exhibition and to be a part of this this um, this um network. Okay. Thank you, Prelly. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I as well. I, I, I love this camaraderie. I really do. I love hearing from the other artists, seeing your work. And again, Carolyn, I want to especially thank you and our conversation we had Thank you so much. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for an amazing exhibition and for uh, all the uh, poetry and insight and learning about books that tell the truth and the honesty of what really went on, still going on today, and uh, still need to fight for our freedom and for justice and liberty for everyone. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> bye bye, Wendy. <laughs> Okay. Thank you guys. God bless you. Have a wonderful have a wonderful rest of your evening. Okay. Bye-bye.